Hello everyone, I'm Jack Fisher and welcome to my world. And today, I'm going to talk about rivalries, but not the awesome kind. Instead, I'm going to discuss a rivalry that just doesn't work on any level. And that's a real tragedy, because generally speaking, we all love and cherish certain rivalries in both the real and fictional worlds. There's Yankees versus Red Sox, there's Coke versus Pepsi, there's Autobots versus Decepticons. And there's a shared passion to these rivalries. That's what makes them so much fun to be part of. And in superhero media, it's even more pronounced. You've got rivalries between heroes and villains like Lex Luthor and Superman. You've got friendly rivalries between characters like Daredevil and the Punisher. These clashes help flesh out the characters and explore what motivates them. It's a powerful dynamic that helps make their stories more interesting. Then there's Inhumans vs. X-Men. A rivalry that has absolutely none of that. In fact, their rivalry, and I use that term loosely, did some irreparable damage to both franchises. This rivalry is so much bigger than anything that played out on TV or in the comics. It's not a stretch to say that the catalyst for this rivalry is actually more interesting than the rivalry itself. And having followed comics and superhero media for so many years, I watched that story play out and it's one of the ugliest, most destructive stories to play out in the history of comics. And this is coming from someone who lived through both the original Clone Saga in Spider-Man and Chuck Austin's run on Uncanny X-Men. Yes, it was that bad. But to appreciate why this rivalry was so bad, I'll have to provide a little background and explore some of the less savory sides of superhero media. I'll also have to take a step back and look at the bigger picture surrounding this rivalry between the X-Men and the Inhumans. Now I'm going to try, emphasis on try, to be fair, both to the franchises and to the creative people behind them. But I can't promise I won't go on a few rants or tirades. I'm only human after all. Please keep that in mind as I break down the worst rivalry in the history of superhero media. Like all rivalries, the clash between the X-Men and the Inhumans has some basis behind it. The problem is it's just incredibly stupid, poorly fleshed out, and exceedingly petty. Now to understand why, it's also necessary to understand some of the office politics surrounding this rivalry. Because that's the primary reason why this rivalry exists in the first place. It's not because of a story. It's not because of some shared narrative that played out over the course of many years. It was only because of decisions happening at the executive level within Marvel and Disney. I promise it's even worse than you think. You see, in the mid-2010s, Marvel and their Disney overlords had a problem. The Avengers and the Marvel Cinematic Universe were hugely successful. Their movies were making billions at the box office and millions more in merchandising. This was all great for the bottom line, but it was still incomplete. That's because Marvel didn't own the movie rights to all their characters at the time. Back in the late 90s, when Marvel was bankrupt and nearly broke, it infamously sold off the movie rights to some of its biggest franchises at the time, namely X-Men, Spider-Man, and the Fantastic Four. Both Fox and Sony went on to use those rights to make billions at the box office. Now that was great for the brand and for superhero movies in general, but Marvel still only saw a fraction of those profits. Before the days of Marvel Studios, it still made sense for them. But then, once Marvel Studios began churning out hits, which, by the way, allowed them to keep much more of the profits, that dynamic changed significantly. Now, Marvel Studios had an active incentive to make movies with characters they own the rights to. That's how we ended up with a movie like Guardians of the Galaxy. At the same time, Marvel also had an incentive to undercut franchises that they didn't have the rights to, namely X-Men and Fantastic Four. And yes, the Spider-Man rights situation is very different. Too different for me to get into with this video. But all you need to know is that Marvel was in a situation where it wasn't getting enough profits from Fox, who were producing the X-Men and the Fantastic Four movies. And ultimately, it all came back to money. And that's where I have to bring up Isaac Perlmutter, Marvel's reclusive and somewhat infamous CEO. Now, there are many strange stories about this man. He's quite a character, and not in a good way. I won't recount some of those stories. I'll just note that, in addition to being very reclusive, he's very frugal. 
This is a guy who will fish out paper clips from the trash can rather than throw them away. And because of that frugality, he grew incredibly resentful of any franchise that Marvel didn't own outright. There were even some stories of him ripping off posters that included depictions of the Fantastic Four and the X-Men. Now, it's not clear how true these stories are. Again, Perlmutter is a very colorful character and it's hard to get any real information about him. All we know for sure is that once the incentive was there, the X-Men and the Fantastic Four began fading from prominence. Now, this was never stated officially, but the signs weren't exactly subtle. We saw little to no merchandising from the X-Men or the Fantastic Four. They didn't show up in video games or cartoons. It really was that serious. And it's within this context, this situation born out of greed, pettiness, and just office politics, that the Inhumans X-Men rivalry emerged. While executives at Marvel and Disney were fuming over movie rights and box office profits, the comics were already setting the stage. The X-Men's reputation had already taken a hit earlier that decade. They may not have lost the big Avengers vs. X-Men crossover event in 2012, but their prominence took a major hit after that. Now, without getting too deep into the story behind that messy event, which may warrant a video in and of itself one day, it started what became a troubling pattern for the X-Men. Basically, in any conflict in which the X-Men were involved, you could usually assume the outcome fairly easily. If the movie rights were at all entangled with Fox, then that side was going to lose, plain and simple. Now, the X-Men came out of Avengers vs. X-Men looking like the villains of that story, even though their motivations were nothing of the sort. The Avengers came out bigger, stronger, and bolder. That growth extended to other affiliated franchises, provided that their movie rights were still with Marvel and Disney. Some of that was a good thing. The Guardians of the Galaxy definitely benefited from that growth. As for the Inhumans, well, that's where things get complicated, and ugly, and petty. Because like Guardians of the Galaxy, they're a somewhat obscure franchise, but one that has been around since the mid-1960s. They seemed ripe for the same treatment. Now, they were already enjoying a higher profile at the time, thanks to their role in the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. TV show. They were also becoming much more relevant in the comics, playing a major role in events like Infinity. Marvel went on to assign their top talent to Inhumans comics, and popular characters like Kamala Khan were given the Inhuman label, which helped expand their ranks even more. And at one point, Marvel Studios even planned to make a movie with them. It even got a release date at one point for November 2nd, 2018. The Inhumans really did have everything going for them. Marvel and Disney had all the incentive in the world to make them a full-fledged, fully functioning franchise. But it's how they went about it that was so egregiously flawed. The approach had a clear but unsaid agenda, one that seemed to come from Marvel's top executives. It all boiled down to this. Ditch the X-Men, replace them with Inhumans, to hell with the finer details. Now that might not have been the official statement from Marvel, but trust me, that's exactly the message that X-Men fans got. We all saw the disturbing trends. We just didn't know how bad it was going to get, and it was already pretty damn bad. If these distressing trends for the X-Men and Humans rivalry had a low point, it definitely came in 2015 with the launch of Extraordinary X-Men. This book, which was part of a major relaunch at the time, effectively put the entire mutant race through hell, literally to some extent. After the events of Infinity, the Terrigen Mist, the exotic mist that unlocks an Inhuman's powers, had covered the entire planet. For Inhumans, it's sacred. It's the catalyst that activates an Inhuman's latent potential. And throughout their history, the Inhumans have gone to great lengths to guard and protect it. Now for people who aren't Inhuman, it's just completely harmless. It's just a fancy looking cloud. But for mutants, it turned out to be deadly. So deadly, in fact, that it didn't just stop at making mutants very sick, it effectively sterilized them. And this is all happening just a few years after the mutants saved their entire race thanks to the events of Avengers vs. X-Men. So narratively speaking, this was an Omega level fuck you to an entire race. And the only way mutants could survive at this point was to move what remained of their population to Limbo a hell-like dimension populated primarily by demons. Trust me, it's as bad as it sounds and then some. 
It effectively did what armies of sentinels never could, purge the entire planet of mutants. Oh, and did I mention that all of this happened off panel, taking place entirely between the release of Uncanny X-Men 600 and Extraordinary X-Men number one? And that somewhere along the line, Cyclops, one of the most popular X-Men of all time, was killed off screen and vilified for reasons that weren't even clear? Yes, all that happened. It's impossible to overstate the anger and frustration that X-Men fans expressed by that shift. And on top of all that, the Avengers' response to this horrible plague infecting mutants was, well, nothing. Not a goddamn thing. Some did help the X-Men relocate mutants to Limbo, but when a response entails sending an entire population to a hellish dimension, someone either has to be exceedingly callous or horribly negligent. But the Inhumans' reaction was even worse. They knew their fancy cloud was killing people, innocent people who meant them no harm. But that cloud is sacred to them. Without it, there could be no Inhumans. Now true, people would still have Inhuman DNA. And true, that DNA would essentially be locked. And true, people with that Inhuman DNA likely would not know about it, living normal, healthy lives. But, you know what, actually, there is no but. There is no context, no excuse, and no justification. I'm sorry, people. This is where I just can't be unbiased. Because at this point, both the agenda and the narrative are very clear. Inhumans are replacing mutants. Their role is expanding while the X-Men role is diminishing. All those years of prominence and respect, none of it mattered anymore. They're just relegated to limbo, literally and figuratively, to make way for the Inhumans. All because Marvel didn't own the X-Men movie rights and couldn't profit from their box office success. It's a frustrating case of corporate politics infecting an established, beloved franchise. Again, there was never an official statement that this was Marvel's intent, to undercut the X-Men to prop up the Inhumans, but seeing it manifest this way in the comics, while also noting their absence from other media, the implication was clear. And it ultimately set the stage for a rivalry that never felt fair, balanced, or compelling for that matter. And it's a rivalry that stood on a very flawed foundation. Now on paper, Inhumans have a lot of similarities to mutants. So much so that it's not entirely surprising that Marvel executives thought it would be no big deal to push them instead of mutants. But I doubt those same executives even browsed the Inhumans Wikipedia page, let alone understood the implications, some of which were deeply disturbing. Now like mutants, Inhumans were born with a unique gene. It's the source of whatever powers they develop. That gene is actually a byproduct of experiments that the Kree did on early Homo sapiens thousands of years ago. While the Kree ultimately abandoned those experiments, those within humans' DNA lingered in the population. However, the only way to unlock those powers was through the Terrigen Mists. By contrast, mutant genetics are a lot more blunt. You're born with a mutant gene, also known as the X gene, and you get it the same way you get your eye color, skin tone, and blood type. You don't need a fancy cloud for your mutant abilities to manifest, you just have to survive until puberty. For some, it happens even sooner than that. And you can't stop it for the same reason you can't stop having O positive blood. It's just a part of who you are. Now, that may seem like a trivial difference, but make no mistake, that distinction matters a great deal. In the context of what mutants and the X-Men represent, it's a critical factor in their narrative, especially when compared to the Inhumans because mutants don't have a choice in being mutants. They don't get a say in being born the way they are, no more than any of us get a say in the circumstances of our birth. And pretty much anyone can be born a mutant. You could be a kid from Alaska, a young girl living on Long Island, a pickpocket in Cairo, a farm boy from Siberia, or even some ill-tempered brute from Canada. Location, culture, and background don't matter. All that matters is you're born that way. It's that premise from which the X-Men mythos is built. Since their debut in 1963, their story has mirrored the real-life struggles of other marginalized groups. Like someone who's born black, gay, or disabled, they struggle to fit into a society that hates and fears them. And regardless of how an ordinary mutant sees that struggle, they can't really avoid it. Even if they don't ally with Charles Xavier or Magneto, their status as a mutant is going to impact them. But an inhuman faces a different kind of struggle, and it's wholly incompatible with that of a marginalized group. Because by their very nature, inhumans have a choice. 
they have some measure of control over who and what they become. In principle, you could be born with inhuman DNA, but you don't necessarily have to become a full-fledged inhuman. As long as you avoid the Terrigen Mists, you're as normal as anyone. You can still choose to be exposed to these mists. Historically, that meant going through Black Bolt, Medusa, and the Inhumans' royal family. But even after the mists are released, you could still theoretically just avoid them and never have to deal with being an Inhuman. It would be akin to choosing your sexual orientation. By just avoiding exposing yourself to some visible, measurable cloud, you can decide whether or not you want to unlock that part of your identity. Now, I admit that's not a fair comparison, and it has some troubling implications, but it still gets the point across. Inhumans can control their nature. Mutants cannot. That's why putting Inhumans in the same narrative, that being a marginalized group, just doesn't work. In some respects, it's downright offensive, the idea that someone can freely choose to become an oppressed minority. It only gets worse when that choice is forced upon someone, which is a common occurrence in the Inhumans comics. That mechanism just does not fit into the X-Men's overarching narrative. That still didn't stop Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. from trying to force it, but it just didn't work. It had none of the impact or the resonance. It also came off as a direct insult to X-Men and their fans. And it only got worse when the comic skewed those differences even more. Now personally, I'm as big a Marvel fan as they come. But I freely admit I knew very little about the Inhumans and I did not follow them for many years. But I was aware of them and I did see the appeal on some levels. Whereas mutants and X-Men follow ordinary people born with extraordinary abilities, the Inhumans is more akin to a secret society. For much of their history, they've lived their lives in secret, preferring to stay out of human affairs altogether. They exercise tight control over the Terrigen Mists and their society. They work hard to preserve, protect, and grow that society, even when it puts them at odds with the outside world. It's kind of like Game of Thrones, but with superpowers, weird costumes, and a giant teleporting dog. Now, I don't deny that has plenty of appeal. There's certainly a place for that in the Marvel Universe. And for much of their existence, the Inhumans have stayed true to that story and its various appeals. But then, the conflicts over the movie rights and mutants come into play, and suddenly, Marvel and their Disney overlords tried to completely change that story and that appeal. But doing so meant completely abandoning everything that made the Inhumans so appealing to begin with. And in the comics, it got very messy to say the least. At some points, it got downright cringy. Let me put it like this. Here's the secret society of superpowered beings. Suddenly, they're forced by circumstance to become part of a larger world. As the Terrigen Mists turn more and more people into Inhumans, they expand their ranks and grow their influence. They even move their home, Adelan, into a more visible location near New York. And the rest of the world just shrugs it off? Yes, there are some moments where people express concern and anger. Some even show real animosity to Inhumans and the royal family. They make more than their share of enemies and for once, it's not entirely restricted to royal politics. But are they ever attacked by armies of killer robots? No. Are they ever brought to the brink of extinction? No. Are they ever slaughtered by the millions like mutants were in Genosha? No. Are they ever forced to go to war with the Avengers for their own survival? Again, no. And yet, we the audience are supposed to accept that these guys are suitable replacements for mutants? that they can be part of this inherently powerful story about marginalized groups? Even if I wasn't an X-Men fan, I'd still call bullshit. The Inhumans, by their nature, cannot be that kind of marginalized group. Again, they have a choice in becoming what they are. And on top of that, they have their own society and culture, which, by the way, has traditions steeped in xenophobia and a form of quasi-slavery. Look up the Alpha Primitives for more information about that. Not only does that demean the X-Men and their narrative, it completely overlooks the very thing that made Inhumans appealing in the first place. In the same way you can't turn Superman into the Punisher, you just can't turn the Inhumans into the X-Men, not without fundamentally destroying their character or their story. And once the Inhumans and X-Men went to war, that narrative and that appeal completely fell apart. Now, it's not uncommon for superheroes to clash with one another. When done right, 
It brings out the best in both sides. That's why events like Marvel Civil War are held in such high regard. What makes those stories work is that both sides have an understandable and even noble goal. They fight each other in pursuit of that goal, even if it means clashing with close friends and loved ones. Ideally, each side has a valid point to make, a point you can understand and even empathize with. In Humans vs. X-Men, the event that brought all these conflicting forces to a head had absolutely none of that. There's just no way around it. The Inhumans were the assholes, plain and simple. If you're a diehard Inhumans fan, I'm sorry, but this isn't just my opinion, it comes down to basic math. When the event starts, Hank McCoy makes some disturbing calculations. The Terrigen Mists are about to saturate the planet to a dangerous level, one that will render it uninhabitable for any mutants still living on it. They won't just get sick, they won't just be sterilized, they'll die, plain and simple. And Hank's solution doesn't involve confronting the Inhumans about this. His recourse is for the mutants to just leave Earth and try to survive as best they can somewhere else. Basically, he says they should just give up and let the Inhumans have their way. It goes over about as well as you'd expect. And the Inhumans' reaction to this is just hard to justify. Even though they don't learn about Hank's dire calculations until the end of the conflict, there's already plenty of blood on their hands. They knew their cloud was killing mutants. They knew innocent mutants had suffered and died because of it. They still refuse to contain or destroy their sacred mists. To them, it's sacred. To destroy it would mean destroying the Inhumans' future. And without it, no new Inhumans could emerge. But, and this is an important detail, nobody would die. That's where the math comes in. And they're aware of this math even before they find out about Hank's dire predictions but they're still willing to tolerate a few mutant deaths to preserve their precious cloud. Take a moment to think about what that says about them and the dynamics of this rivalry. Because on one side, you've got this group of so-called heroes, and their position is essentially, well, a bunch of mutants may die, but that's okay because our cloud is sacred. And on the other, you've got this group who is literally fighting to not suffer horribly and die, and by destroying the mists, they stop that. Nobody in the royal family dies, no existing inhumans die, Nobody with an Inhumans gene dies. They all just get to continue living their lives. That's the dynamic in play with this conflict. One group fights to preserve a cloud that's killing innocent mutants. The other fights against that. And this is supposed to be a clash between two teams of heroes? Hell, even a war against Hydra wasn't this unbalanced. There's even this terrible scene in a prelude comic where a young mutant girl dies horribly after being exposed to the Terrigen Mists. That moment right there should have ended the war, but it didn't. The story still had to play out with the Inhumans trying at every turn to make some bullshit excuse. Now, it's not like the X-Men didn't make their share of mistakes. Their biggest being they never bothered to tell the Inhumans' royal family that the planet was about to be rendered uninhabitable for mutants. Now, there was some reasoning behind that. They believed the Inhumans would never allow their sacred cloud to be destroyed, and they would fight tooth and nail to protect it at every turn. Given all the events that led up to this event, that's not an unreasonable assumption. It was an ugly situation made much worse by misguided decisions. Now at the very least, which isn't saying much, the Inhumans eventually do end the conflict in the X-Men's favor. It does require that they destroy the Mists, something they resisted doing from the beginning, but by then it's already too late. Many mutants still suffered and died, and the X-Men were still wrongly vilified at every turn. It was as hollow a victory as it's possible to have. While, as an X-Men fan, I was glad to see this ugly conflict end, it still left some indelible scars on both franchises, some of which have yet to fully heal. It's not unreasonable to say that the Inhumans X-Men conflict did irreparable damage to both franchises. Now, I can't speak for all X-Men fans, but I don't think I could ever look at the Inhumans the same way ever again. Before this contrived rivalry, I had no ill will towards them whatsoever. I would have gladly watched an Inhumans movie, hoping they could succeed on the same levels as Guardians of the Galaxy. Now, I can only ever see the Inhumans as the team Marvel tried to use to replace the X-Men and mutants. This team, this franchise built around secret societies, royal families, and mild xenophobia, they were getting the royal treatment and this other beloved franchise was getting shafted at every turn because of issues that had nothing to do with their respective stories. Now in general, I'm a pretty forgiving guy, especially when it comes to superhero comics. 
I understand how messy they can get. Over 50 years of continuity will do that to any franchise or several. But I have a hard time overlooking the egregious circumstances surrounding Inhumans vs. X-Men. Again, I can't speak for all X-Men fans, but I've been around enough message boards and subreddits to pick up on a general sentiment. Most X-Men fans don't like Inhumans and probably never will. They generally cheered when the Inhumans TV show flopped, going on to become one of Marvel Studios' few failures. They also cheered when sales of the Inhumans comics tanked while sales of the X-Men comics rebounded. I freely admit I took part in some of that cheering. After what the X-Men went through during Marvel's massive Inhumans push, I couldn't help but feel vindicated and relieved. And it probably helped that right around the time of Inhumans vs. X-Men, the relationship between Fox and Disney improved. And it ultimately culminated with Disney buying Fox outright, gaining back all those movie rights that once caused executives so much frustration. And while it's nice to see the X-Men featured prominently in other Marvel media, it's hard to forget how far Marvel took it. They showed they were willing to destroy a beloved and successful franchise in order to prop up another. It was scary and the way they went about it was just so disturbing. I don't think I need to explain why the idea of gassing a marginalized minority to death is such a troubling plot point. And ultimately, the results for both franchises were counterproductive. While the X-Men were able to bounce back, thanks largely to Marvel's willingness to ignore the rivalry, the Inhumans have not recovered. For the most part, they're back to being relative unknowns in the comic book world. Now, they also have the baggage of having a terrible TV show that got cancelled, as well as a story that had them justify gassing a minority to death. That's some heavy baggage to say the least. I still get the sense that Marvel wants to make the Inhumans more successful, but I think Inhumans vs. X-Men made that significantly more challenging. Now, I'd love to see a day where Inhumans fans and X-Men fans could be on friendlier terms. I'd also love to see the Inhumans become a strong, functioning franchise in their own right. I still believe they have potential. Characters like Black Bolt, Medusa, and Kamala Khan have what it takes to help them succeed. But, but for now, they're still largely defined by their misguided conflict with the X-Men. And the X-Men are still a franchise that Marvel has to rebuild thanks to their own sabotage. Even though the X-Men have a brighter future in the near term, especially with respect to film and TV, they still have a lot of catching up to do. In terms of rivalries, I don't think any side won this one. Neither the Inhumans nor the X-Men came out better, stronger, or more successful because of it. That's the ultimate tragedy of this conflict. Nobody won. Not the fans, not the writers, and not even the executives. It was just a bad story within bad circumstances with bad motivations. In the end, the Inhumans-X-Men rivalry accomplished nothing for anyone. That's the ultimate tragedy, but it's also one worth learning from. Thanks for watching, everyone. And thanks for joining me in my world. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, take care and stay safe.